you and somebody else out there, and all of a sudden this is happening. At least you have this to give you a, a bit of information on what you're you doing. You have to remember you got it in your wallet. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the only place I could think of keeping this, though. Yeah. It's nice. It's a business card size. It's perfect. Or having it right next to the AED if there's an AED right there. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you never know. One minute. It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Brad Miller as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives here in Yavapai County. And now, here's today's Countywide. Welcome to County Line. I'm Paul David. Very good to have you in studio today. Uh, Skip Heyer is here from the Verde Valley Fire District. He teaches their CCR. Is that right, Skip? CPR hands CPR. only. CPR hands only class. And so he is going to take us through that today along with an AED and describe this. And we've got a mannequin here today to talk about this. I'm going to do some hands-on stuff with Skip. And, and this is going to be good for me to learn but it's going to be good for everybody else to learn as well. And so if you're listening on the radio, we'll do our best to describe what we're doing. If you're watching the show, of course, you'll see exactly what we're doing. But if you are listening on the radio, you're going to want to make sure you come back to our website and, and tune into the channel and, and take a look at this because this is really good information because we really don't know when this something like this might happen. Never know. You never know. I mean, that's the we've been talking about a lot the last couple of months is be prepared. You never know what might come your way. That's right. So let's get right into it because I know there's a lot to talk about. So kind of tell me what we're talking about today. First of all, thank you very much for having me this oh, morning. Oh, thanks for coming. I appreciate uh, it. About uh, 1996, uh, Sarville Hart, University of Arizona, Tucson, uh, Doc Evie, Doc Kern were very upset because Arizona had a survival rate of less than 5%. Oh, wow. Of uh, cardiac arrest patients. And I'm saying just a survival rate, not with the quality of life. Mm -hmm. uh, studies were done. And uh, from that, it was determined, do we really need to breathe for that patient with the cardiac arrest? And how do we determine it's a cardiac arrest? Because we see that movies, the pump, pump, and then the blow in the mouth, and right. then the pump, pump, blow in the mouth. So, OK. OK. So anyway, uh, facts were established in the fact that we have about 21% oxygen in the air. Of that, we only use about 6% every time we breathe in and out. Okay. So we have lots of oxygen in our blood system normally uh, for an adult. And as a result, all we've got to do is move it from the heart to the lung, back to the heart, up to the brain. Realizing that the brain and the heart start to die in less than three minutes without oxygen. And every minute thereafter, 10% of your brain and the heart die. Oh, boy. So if you wait five minutes, you've lost 50% of your brain. Oh, man. So the object is to recognize, to uh, call 911, get emergency vehicles rolling, and start compressions. With first emphasis being on your safety, the rescuer. We don't want you going into a situation that... Uh, could lead to a second uh, patient rather than only having one. Okay. So take a couple of deep breaths, look around, make sure you're going to be safe, and then do this. I'd say staying calm is probably an important thing, which is a difficult situ thing to do when you're, you're under pressure like that. And when you take that extra couple of deep breaths, that's more oxygen up here for okay. you. To get you to calm down. Get you to calm down. Okay, then what should we do? Okay, basically, 
What we'll want to do is establish whether we need to do this or not. Uh, you'll use a, a, a shake and shout method. And if there's no response, you might try a sternum rub like big brother, big sister used to do up here. Okay. It's painful. Okay. Right? Yeah, the, okay, that is painful. Right, yeah, okay. Do it right on I the sternum. I remember that. Do it right on the sternum. Uh huh. And. Uh, so now we're checking just to see if the patient is even alert, awake, can or speak. Or if, if he has a response. Okay. If he moans and groans and says, What the heck are you doing to me? You don't need to do this. Right. Uh, an epileptic, a diabetic, an alcoholic, a fainting episode will respond to one of those two or both stimuluses. Okay. A cardiac arrest patient will not. Uh, any idea why? No. Well, those, f those four that I listed off mm -hmm. all have a pulse and they're all breathing. Okay, well, that makes sense. The other one doesn't. A cardiac arrest patient does not. They are deceased. Or soon to die. Okay. Or soon to die. So it's essential that you then start compressions. And uh, you cannot do this uh, with chicken wings. You've got to have your arms locked, your shoulders right over the patient. Is it, is it time? Okay, you know what? Let's take our first break. We'll take our first break okay. because we knew we were going to take our first break a little early because Skip and I are going to stand here and we're going to... Uh, demonstrate how this works. You're going to basically teach me the class that you teach when you go around the Verde Valley, Arizona. When and our teach team does. When our well, team. The team, correct. So let's go ahead and take our first break. We'll come back and we'll do that. Skip Hire from Verde Valley Fire District is in the studio today. I'm Paul David. Stick around. Countywide will be back in just a couple minutes. Having a fire escape plan is very important to keep your family safe and together in the event of a fire. When you awake to the sound of a smoke detector and smoke in your room, don't stand straight up. Carefully roll off your bed and stay low under the smoke. If your door is shut, feel the door with the back of your hand. Slowly open the door if no heat is felt. Always stay low until you get to the outside of your home. Always have two ways out of your house and a specified meeting place somewhere outside your home. Home escape plans should be drawn up and rehearsed on a regular basis. This could be the difference between life and death if caught in a fire. Move over, AZ. Arizona's move over law requires you to move over or slow down when you drive past any vehicle pulled over with flashing lights. Any vehicle means emergency responders, roadside assistance, law enforcement, highway crews, even stranded motorists. Ignore the law and you could pay a fine. Remember, every vehicle, every time. Move over, AZ. Sponsored by ADOT in partnership with the Arizona Broadcasters Association and this station. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Welcome back to County White. Paul David here with Skip Heyer from the Verde Valley Fire District. We are going to be talking about the, say it again for me. The Hands-only CPR. Hands-only CPR. And I'm going to learn how to do this today. And we have this, tell me what this device is right here before we get it's, started. It's called an automatic external defibrillator. And we talked about this quite a bit before the show. And I remember years ago, Sedona made a big deal about the fact that they were putting them all through uptown Sedona for all the tourists that are there. But you say they are now located all over the Verde Valley. Not only that, state. but churches up in Sedona area, mm -hmm. uh, village, uh, very, very strong up schools. in that. Schools. Schools. In our valley, down here, the lower valley, uh, we have them in all of our schools, a lot of the clubhouses, several businesses. Um, and if you're wondering where they're at, uh, in schools, they're probably in the gymnasium area, and uh, they're there for a reason, and that's because mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, are there watching the kids. Mm -hmm. Is it is it is it well displayed? Because I'm trying to think to myself if I've ever seen one, and I, I think I, I remember seeing one in Uptown Sedona. I, I want to say it's a it's a red box box on a post, and, it, and it's inside that, but I'm not sure. That's I, I, exactly right. Is that on, right? Okay. On 89A in downtown Sedona. Uh, on one on each block. Okay. 
Uh, interesting that you should bring this up as far as that is concerned, where they're located at. I assume you fly out of Sky Harbor every time you leave the... Yeah, yeah, the airports. You know where they're at there? I'm going to say by the white phone. No. No. Uh, where's the first place you go to uh, when you... Restrooms. Uh, restrooms. They're between every men's and ladies' restroom in oh. the entire airport. That is the safest place in the United States right now to have a cardiac arrest. The airport. Is that particular airport. Okay. That particular airport. 39 people at last report have gone down to cardiac arrest at the airport. 35 of them are walking around today. Wow, that's great. What's the quality of life? That's amazing. Yeah. So we really need to, I guess we need to pay attention and find out where one of these is near us because you said they're like $1,400, so it's not really something I'd have in my house. A lot of churches nearby. have them. Yeah. Uh, community centers, like I said, several business and all those schools. So anywhere that there's a lot of people might get together. Right. There's usually one there. And all your fire stations and EMS areas mm -hmm. have them. So. And this is just in case we can't get you there right away. Or is this, is, is this because we're waiting for you to get there? If we can get you to do this, uh -huh. we, after you've done a couple of minutes mm -hmm. or three or four minutes of compressions right. or until you get that hooked up, um, that just gives, gives us an added additional patient re, uh, response time. Okay. Let's, let's okay. do our scenario, Skip. Someone's fallen down and they're in cardiac arrest. Do I know they're in cardiac arrest, though? So I've done the shaking. Hey, can you okay. hear me? Wake up. Are you there? Loud. Loud. Really loud. loud. I'm not going to scream because I'll hit the mic. Right. But then I want to make, uh, if that doesn't work, should I do the, the chest rub, make a fist, rub that up and down the right. chest? Some of the uh, movies that you see out there about this, are you all right? Are you all right? No, that doesn't cut it. Yell it. Because okay. not only is that a noise stimulus to the patient that he may respond to, but it's also an alert to your engineer to come in here and say, hey, what's going on? Okay. So uh, actually, we want to irritate this person to see if we can snap them out of it. Okay. Right. Okay, that and, didn't work. Okay. Didn't work. Sternum rub. Okay. Very, very respectfully, but hard, right across the sternum. Okay. Just as hard as you can. Okay. Okay? Okay. It's a pain stimulus. Still nothing. Still nothing. All right. Draw an imaginary line right through the breast area, right along the nipple line. Okay. Okay. Get your arms over the top of the, and shoulders over the top of the patient. Okay. Okay? And fall on that patient uh, at least two inches deep. Okay. Okay? Two inches into the chest. Okay. And come off the chest. In other words, rock up allows that chest to expand. You're kind of bouncing up and down off of there. So, and we don't, you said don't do the chicken wing where you're, I'm doing this with you my arms. You can't do it, you can't do it. Right, so you gotta use your whole body weight right. to push down onto the person, okay? okay. And uh, where this is a change from what we were originally teaching a couple of years ago. Uh, it used to be approximately two inches deep. Now we need to have you at least two inches deep. Okay. Okay? And to remember to come off that patient as much as you possibly can, completely. I like to rock up and down. Okay, so now we're, we're pushing the chest in, Along. which is air coming out, right? Right. And then we're letting it go. That's also, that's, the, that's also moving the, pumping the heart. Okay. That's okay. primary. Okay. 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 But as you're exp allowing the chest to expand, you're allowing the blood flow back into the heart, and you're also allowing air to come back into the lungs. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So am I, am I going to continue doing this? You're going to continue doing okay, that. Okay, so I'm still doing compressions. And you've sent me to go find the AD and call 911. Okay. Okay. Make sure you hurry. So, <laughs> yes. And I come back. I found the AD, which we'll get into in just a few minutes. And it looks like you're tired. Yeah. Okay, don't stop. No, don't stop. Okay. Okay. So we're still going. We're still going. Okay, I'm, okay. I'm thinking I need a break. All right. You count to three, and I'm going to slide in. Okay. One, two, three. Because I'm not even going fast enough then, am I? You said no. you said before the show at least 100 times. 100 compressions a minute. 100 compressions a minute. The easiest okay. way to remember that is perhaps the song, uh, Staying Alive. <laughs> okay. Okay, right. the Bee Gees, Staying Alive. Right. There's another one for us older folks that our grandparents, uh, Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Okay. That works too. Okay, okay? all right. So we've done compressions, mm -hmm. we've done compressions, we've done compressions. And in some cases, uh, I've only known one that could help start the heart. Okay. 
The heart is sitting basically in a, hopefully, still in a V-fib, V-tac situation where it's sitting quivering. It's still got electrical pulses going to it. It wants to work, but it's not working, right? But it's not working. Okay. Okay? Okay. So the next thing we can do, hopefully, is have an AED available. You've called 911. You're probably talking to dispatch anyways right now, correct? It brings up an interesting situation. Hmm. You're carrying a cell phone. I'm carrying a cell phone. Most of the folks listening and watching are carrying cell phones. Right. Put it on loudspeaker. Oh, okay. Good idea. You can sit it down there next to you. You can sit it down, you carry on the conversation, and that dispatcher that we have throughout the state, but especially our group up here in Sedona, mm -hmm. are extremely well trained. Okay. And they Which can, will make me feel better. They can they can stand in there and you're all of a sudden got help. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not by myself anymore. You're not by yourself. Even if I was by myself. Right, you're I'm not. not by myself. Okay. They'll pick up okay. Are you going deep enough? Are you going what's your rate? Count out loud. Mm -hmm. Let me hear you. They're there to help you, to prompt you, and it does work. We know of a situation in Clarkdale right now. The survivor is alive strictly because of the 911 dispatcher in Sedona. That is awesome. Okay, so that is really good to know because so, that, that's important. The 911 call is really important because, yeah, like you said, now I'm not alone even if I am alone dealing with this situation, somebody can keep me calm too. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So. What am I doing now? We've been doing the compressions for how long do we do that for? Until we get there, until emergency vehicles okay. get there. Okay. 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 Or until you can't do it anymore. Okay. But that's between you and the good Lord and, 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 everything, and, yeah, and right. everything else. Okay. But you do that. And normal response time is anywhere from four to five minutes. Okay. Four to five minutes, that's not too bad. Well, it, it can be after two minutes of, in, by yourself. Right, right. Okay. 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 So. We want you to do as compressions as deep. As long as we can. As long as you can. As long as we can. Okay. Because okay. that, that is getting air into the lungs. More importantly. To the heart and, and the brain. And the brain and the heart. They gotcha. start to die in less than four minutes without oxygen. Okay. So that is very important to keep those compressions going so we've got oxygen going in and out to the heart okay. and the brain. Gotcha. Okay. 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 So. When does the AED come into play? When we get it back into place. Okay. Okay, I've gone to call 911. You're doing compressions. Go okay. ahead and do compressions. They're about five. Oh, Ryan would like to take our break before we go jump into the AED. Just Let's fine. do that. Let's take okay. our second break. Okay. Skip Hires here from the Verde Valley Fire District. We are doing the uh, CCR. No, the. the why do I, I, I don't remember it every time. Hands it's only CPR. Hands only CPR. Hands only CPR. Stick around. County will be back in just a couple minutes. Having a fire escape plan is very important to keep your family safe and together in the event of a fire. When you awake to the sound of a smoke detector and smoke in your room, don't stand straight up. Carefully roll off your bed and stay low under the smoke. If your door is shut, feel the door with the back of your hand. Slowly open the door if no heat is felt. Always stay low until you get to the outside of your home. Always have two ways out of your house and a specified meeting place somewhere outside your home. Home escape plans should be drawn up and rehearsed on a regular basis. This could be the difference between life and death if caught in a fire. Move over, AZ. Arizona's move over law requires you to move over or slow down when you drive past any vehicle pulled over with flashing lights. Any vehicle means emergency responders, roadside assistance, law enforcement, highway crews, even stranded motorists. Ignore the law and you could pay a fine. Remember, every vehicle, every time. Move over, AZ. Sponsored by ADOT in partnership with the Arizona Broadcasters Association and this station. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Welcome back to Countywide. We are resuscitating. This is the hands only CPR. It was CCR, and y'all switched it back to CPR because the rest, we just didn't know it was CCR or CPR. So, anyways. 
Okay, so we've been doing the compressions. We're going to switch to the AED now. Right. So I'm going to keep doing the compressions, correct? Okay. I'm doing this while I've got you there. Unless, of course, I'm by myself. Then I would have to stop and slide this underneath. But okay. I, another count? Three, two, one. Go, go. You see how I did that is to uh, have him stop just for a, um, one less than one second. We had the T-shirt off, uh, the underwear off. It's got to be done on bare skin. And he's continuing to do compressions, okay? I'm going to turn the machine off, on. It talks to us, lets us know what to do. Unit, okay. It's done a self-analyzation. It, it works properly. Call for help. I've called 911. Check responsiveness. Call for help. Open airway. We don't need to do that anymore. That's uh, more for our EMS healthcare providers, so forth. Check breathing. Give two breaths. No more checking the pulse. No more rescue breathing for a cardiac arrest. Now, are they going to remove that from these? Pads to oh, okay, we've got the pads already attached. Remember one thing, to turn the machine on and take the protective the cover off, off the back of the pads. It's a very sticky, like flypaper. Okay. Okay. Stop. When it's analyzing, you can't be touching the patient. If you happen to Don't nudge it, touch patient. it will in fact give a false reading to the machine and therefore may or may not shock. Gotcha. Shock advised. Don't touch patient. Press flashing shock button. And make sure I'm clear, you're clear, we're all clear. And I'm shocking. Don't touch patient. Press flashing shock button. Shock delivered. Start CPR. And you go right back doing compressions. Okay. Okay? and you'll do them for two minutes. How do you know two minutes are up? The machine will tell you. Okay, so it comes back out and prompts me again. It'll continue to prompt you all the way through this. We've got about a minute left. Continue. Okay. CPR. Uh, in that case, I'll shut this off so we can commit. But at the end of that two minutes, it will come back on and say analyze. Okay. It'll stop, analyze, see whether there's a heartbeat, what respiration and go from there. Now, real quick, if it says, does it tell me again, maybe that first one didn't work, do you do it, you do it again? We just keep following this until Follow that. you arrive. Until the EMS personnel get Arrives. there. Uh, real quick, we wanted to also talk about if, if it's a drowning victim, there may be some breaths involved. Yeah, if it's a youngster under eight years old or a drowning patient, we still want to breathe for that patient, okay? Uh, in those cases, that's a separate class all in itself. Okay. Uh, make sure that you contact uh, your uh, local EMS facilities or fire departments. They have classes that we'll be happy to teach you that. You I, go all over the Verde Valley and, and teach these classes. Right. To, to our, groups, our, our churches, teams. schools, children, adults. It doesn't matter. If, if they want to learn how to do this, we'll do, we'll call your there. local fire department and, and we'll, say, we want to have a class. We want to learn... Hands only CPR. Right. Stop to look at my notes. Hands only CPR. Thanks so much for coming in, Skip. Thank you very much. It's Appreciate always very good. I feel I feel if this happened, I would know what to do now. That's the important part. That is the important part. All right. That's today's countywide. Skip Hire from Birdie Valley Fire District was in the studio today. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again next time. This has been Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Listen in each Tuesday and Thursday as we tackle the hot topics and talk to the decision makers across Yavapai County. That's Countywide with Brad Miller and Paul David each Tuesday and Thursday on this Yavapai Broadcasting Station.